And with us now is a former two-time member of the Team Alberta U18 female squad, Cassandra Vilgrain. She suited up for Team Alberta at the U18 National Championships in 2011 and 12, then went on to play three seasons in the NCAA for the University of New Hampshire before transferring to the University of British Columbia to play for the Thunderbirds and complete her education. From there, she traveled to Sweden to play a season in the SDHL, which I'm not going to say the, the name of that league in the, in the native language, but the, the Swedish Women's Hockey League. Um, and then after the season overseas, she's back in Alberta now, living and working in Calgary. So Cass, thanks a lot for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here. And first off, as we always do, you know, I, I went through your bio, just kind of only scratched the surface though. So can you expand on that a little bit and, and take us through your hockey journey coming up, uh, basically playing minor hockey in Alberta to where you are now? I've lived in uh, Calgary for most of my life. Um, I didn't start playing hockey till I was about seven. Um, I started in 2002, the year that the um, women's national team won gold at the Olympics. I think um, a lot of girls started then as well. Um, so just grew up playing uh, minor hockey in, uh, in within uh, girls hockey Calgary. Um, and then I went on in high school to play for the edge school uh, for athletes. I play, played there for two years before um, getting a full ride scholarship down in uh, the University of New Hampshire, where I attended for three years, as you said. Um, and then, of course, on to UBC from there to finish my undergrad degree. Um, but growing up playing hockey in Calgary was a great experience. And in Alberta, um, especially, so it's such a hockey community. And my dad, uh, being a former player as well, got to coach me growing up, which was great. Um, and then obviously entering into the Team Alberta program um, from, you know, Alberta Cup, Alberta Winter Games, um, up through the U18, U16, U18 program um, was a great program for my uh, overall development as a hockey player. So, yeah. <laughs> Sticking with the Team Alberta theme, you've taken the time in recent years to come back, uh, speak to aspiring female athletes about about your time, uh, even as recent as, as this past weekend with Female Hockey Day. Uh, how important was that Team Alberta program and the process to your development, both as a player, but really as a person too, which I know Team Alberta focuses on a lot? Yeah, I think Team Alberta really prides itself on a high compete level and a high level of play and usually entering that program as a minor hockey player. It's the first time that you're really faced with some adversity and uh, you kind of get to see what level of play you need to be able to go on to this uh, to post-secondary school and even further than that. So as a player, just my overall tempo of my game, uh, the skill development sessions were top notch and I really feel like I came out a better player with that um, overall compete level. Also what Team Alberta takes pride in is also um, the dedication off the ice and that's just not off ice physicality or anything like that, but it's also, you know, that mental skill side of the game, that mental toughness. Um, I think that really helped translate into going into university um, on your own. You're balancing school, you're balancing hockey. Um, there's a lot of things that go into that. So Team Alberta definitely uh, prepared me for that and made me um, a lot of a, a tougher player, both mentally and uh, physically. And you come by your talent, honestly, as you mentioned, your father, Claude, he played 89 games in the NHL for New Jersey, Vancouver, and Philadelphia. Um, so really, how big of an influence was he on your decision to start playing hockey and really your, your whole hockey journey? Yeah, I mean, um, I got the experience to watch my dad a little bit growing up. Um, he retired in about 2001 um, from playing in Europe. And as a family, we got to play over there. But Quite honestly, he wasn't really the one that brought up the idea of playing hockey. It was it was my idea. And he was kind of like, oh, OK, well, <laughs> I guess we're doing that. And um, there was no coach for my first team. So he ended up coaching, coaching me. And um, I tried throughout my hockey career to really mimic him in the sense of, you know, humility and work ethic. And I think that a lot of things that I I take pride in in my own game have been instilled in me from my dad and um, and his coaching and just just watching him day to day um, on the ice, off the ice, everything like that. So I think he played a big part in um, me as a player, as a person. And just like your dad, you went and played hockey overseas as well. Can you tell us a little bit about what first, what went into the decision to do that? And then just a little bit about the experience, because I know it's a pretty unique experience that not a lot of people really uh, get to experience. Yeah, I mean, growing up, you always want to go to the next level. And for me at that point, at the end of my university career, my options were, you know, to play professionally in some capacity. And I, I wanted to at least get one year of that in. Um, 
I'm really passionate about travel and everything like that as well. So um, I thought, why, why not a better opportunity than to go to the SDHL, which is um, one of the high, higher level women's leagues in the world, um, which was an awesome experience. And to follow my dad's footsteps also is amazing because um, he also he, he had gotten to play in the city that I actually played in when he was over in Europe and playing with Team Canada. So, um, yeah, it was a great experience. Sweden is an amazing country. Um, it's kind of easy to to get into the groove of things there because English is such a prominent language there and everybody speaks it. Um, but the level of play was the best hockey I ever had. Um, so uh, I would say that it was it was one year, but I'm so happy I did it. And I would I would definitely suggest to anybody if you're going to try and go pro to you know go overseas at least one or two years. Yeah, I mean, obviously, I've never even had a sniff at professional hockey, but I know talking to people who go to Europe, a uh, really amazing experience. And, you know, I think it's awesome to hear people get to do that. And, and when we talk about experiences, it's no secret. There's a lot to be gained from the game of hockey. Obviously you can play it at a high level, make some money doing it, be a professional, but there's a lot of uh, other life lessons and things you could take out of it as well. Experiences like, as you mentioned, getting a, a free education. So for the, the aspiring athletes out there, can you talk a bit about uh, making sure you, you take advantage of uh, all those opportunities that hockey has to offer outside of just playing professionally. Yeah, I know when you first start playing hockey, especially as a girl, you want to you want to play for the Olympics, and you want to get to Team Canada. And that's the goal. And that's the focus. Um, but there's so many stepping stones along the way. So um, I think putting your education first as a female hockey player is so important. I think that aspect going into your decision of where you want to play post-secondary is very important. Um, I remember they always used to say, like, if you broke your leg and you could never play hockey again, would you want to be at this school in this program that you're in right now? And that's something that um, I kind of wish going back that I, I, I initially made the decision. I, I love the schools, both schools that I went to, both great um, programs that I was in there. Um, but there's certain things that you just have to consider before making those decisions. And then, of course, um, you think... Sometimes as a female hockey player, you think that uh, after you're done university, it's the end of the, end of the road. But I don't, I don't think that it, there are actually a lot of opportunities for women in sport. And that doesn't mean just playing either. That means getting back into coaching and giving back. Um, we always need more female um, influences and female coaches out there as well. So I would say take advantage of the experience that you have going through hockey and going through university and use it either to continue playing somewhere or using your experience to, you know, give back to youth or other, other types of programs. And, and great advice there. And that's obviously why, uh, you know, you're always brought back to, to talk to all the up and coming athletes and using a, a bit of what you said to shift gears now, again, with hockey, it's a widely recognized and more and more everyone's becoming aware that hockey is, it's a, not only can be a white dominated sport, but also can be viewed as male dominated. Um, so as we move forward, there's a lot of work being done to change that. Um, there's still a long way to go. So, you know, uh, from your end coming up playing hockey up until now, even, uh, you know, did you, what kind of discrimination of any type did you kind of have to push through uh, to get to where you got to in hockey? Yeah. So to start off, I think I, I had a very privileged upbringing and I was very fortunate to be in the community that I lived in and um, play for the teams I did. Um, you know, growing up, hearing my dad's experiences from a very young age, he faced a, a lot of racism and I got to hear those stories from a young age. So um, I also was able to, you know, recognize when something just didn't feel right for myself uh, playing. Um, but I remember my first instance of racism, I was about seven years old and one of the girls in the line actually used the N word when she was shaking my hand. And of course I'm seven years old. I have no idea what that word means. And I have to go ask my dad, you know, dad, what does this mean? And so that's the first time that I kind of experienced it. Um, and then throughout playing, um, I wouldn't say that there was blatant discrimination or I don't feel like I was targeted in any way, but there's always those little microaggressions or girls pointing out your skin color as if it's supposed to insult you. And um, just like, you know, when you're chirping back and forth on the ice, that seemed to be a go-to a lot for me that I, I was a minority in some way. Like that was, that was supposed to bring me down. Um, but yeah, going through like you're as a as a minority and usually the only minority on your hockey team, you're kind of expected to fit into a certain stereotype. And I knew that going into teams that I was supposed to be, you know, the, <laughs> I'm supposed to be good at dancing and all these different things. And um, you kind of do get it's not even that it's 
offensive or that it's discrimination, but you do get painted in a certain way. And that's something that I've had to overcome, not just in hockey, but just in my day to day interactions and my friendships and different relationships that I, I had. So I would say that I've been pretty, pretty lucky in regards to that. There's been no explicit um, racism or discrimination, but there has definitely been those comments over the course of my career that I do get on a yearly basis um, that, that can be defeating, but I mean, hearing the stories of my dad and the, what he had to go through and for people like me and um, black players you see in professional hockey now um, paving the way so that we don't have to face as harsh as criticism or discrimination. Well, I think one thing I've, I've learned as has gone on is, is the term unconscious bias, as you mentioned, too, being being painted in, a, in a, a certain light. Really, even a lot of people, it's kind of, I hate using the term locker room talk, but for you, you know, grow, is that kind of not what happened, too? And people would say it, not even necessarily knowing that they're they're saying anything wrong. So I think that's an important thing, too, for people to remember. And, and it starts at home is, is yeah, you got you got to get rid of unconscious bias first and foremost. Yeah, absolutely. And that unconscious bias is so present. I think it's important to realize that, yes, recognizing that you have unconscious bias, but how hard is it to really undo that sort of thing? So it is a kind of an everyday journey. And it's, it's about being mindful, like it doesn't go away just after you've been like, Oh, I've, I've, I've been a perpetrator of this before. So I need to do something about it. It's that constant education. Um, and I think that it just needs to continue and continue and continue or else, you know, subconscious bias will like it, it stays, it stays for a long time. Well, and that's why we appreciate uh, more and more people sharing their story with us or, or sharing their story on really any platform. And for you, uh, as I alluded to earlier, you've been great at making yourself available to come back, uh, Hockey Alberta events, Female Hockey Day, Team Alberta camps, anything like that to talk to young aspiring female athletes. So, um, Obviously, again, no secret too that sometimes the the path to success can be a little more difficult for female hockey players. Uh, sometimes it can be um, wrongfully, you know, um, I guess referred to as inferior to men's hockey. So for you, how important is it to be that role model and let young female athletes know uh, really how far hockey can take them? Yeah, I think um, what was important for me coming back is that I just get to be an example of what can happen in your hockey career. And that, yes, we've always had to push past that misogyny and everything like that. I mean, if you look at any, any big hockey um, blog or entity that posts something about women's hockey, if you go into those comments, it, it really makes your blood boil because it's automatic, like, oh, I know a bunch of guys that can do that. Or guys, hockey is, is way higher level. Why are we posting stuff like this? But um, we know, we know how good our sport is. We know how high level that our sport can get. And I think that girls just need to know that and they need to see it more. And um, my first experience coming back to Team Alberta was in the capacity of U16, um, the U16 development camp in 2019. And it just, it kind of re-inspired me to see how good these girls are getting and how hard they compete and to be able to share some of my knowledge with them um, and show them a thing or two, just not on the ice, but off the ice. And um, it makes me realize that girls just need, need role models and need more women back in the sport uh, to give back, to be able to see that like, hey, this could be me. Um, so I think representation is so important. And lastly, I think this is a good note to end on when you mentioned to even going into blogs, reading comments and stuff. Obviously, the internet is a, can be a, a pretty dark place. I always equate it to, to writing on the bathroom wall, but you know, it, it's out there, people see it, and it can be discouraging. So what would your advice be to, to young female athletes just to, to push through all of that, to ignore the chatter and really just uh, you know, set your goals high? Yeah, I think it's all about balance as well. Um, you don't want to be on social media all the time seeing all this stuff because as much as you, you're you mentally fit enough to uh, shove off some of these horrible things that people are saying online, you still need to take care of yourself. And that means stepping away from it, right? Um, but also leaning on other women in hockey, um, I think is really important. I think um, I always find that whenever I'm facing an issue or conflict or something, just having conversation really helps you to feel a lot better and to create optimism and, you know, seeing different perspectives that, and then you realize, okay, not everybody thinks this way and not everybody feels this way. And just having confidence that you, you love the sport of women's hockey. And that's what it comes back down to is that you have confidence that you can be successful within this sport. And, and it's a high level, um, fun sport to watch. 
I mean, it shouldn't be every four years that we see the women in the Olympics and everybody gets so exciting about it. Like that should be a, that should be an everyday thing. Like women's hockey should have that exposure. So I think it's just, you know, having faith in the game and working to grow it is, is the only thing that you can really do and just shut out. I want to be like, shut out the haters, but that's exactly what you have to do because there's always going to be people that are against it. There's always going to be misogyn- misogynist. There's always going to be racist, but um, you're in control. And that's amazing advice and a great note to end on. And we will let you go, but we really appreciate you taking the time to, to talk to us. And all, of course, all the times you've come back and, and shared your story with everyone. I think you're not only a, a great Alberta success story, but a really great role model for, for young aspiring hockey players. So we appreciate you taking the time to chat with us and I'm sure we'll uh, cross paths again very soon. Yeah. Thanks so much for having me.